road trip from Houston, Texas to New York City, New York State. On his way there, of course, one of the states he drives through is the state of Georgia. As soon as he enters the borders, and crosses the line, he puts on an American jazz saxophonist, band leader, and composer, an iconic figure of 20th century jazz. This was a man who was determined to change the destiny of South Africa, the destiny of South Africans, especially black South Africans who were living in abject poverty. This is Africa, the cradle of mankind's birth, where powerful kingdoms arose with stories of worth. A youth-filled land, the youngest population, with diamonds and cocoa from its fertile foundation, exemplary leaders, their legacy told. Nkrumah, Mandela, their spirits bold. From Johnson Sirleaf's Liberia, where freedom lies, and her first female leader, so wise. Let courage and dreams unite as one for a brighter tomorrow where greatness is spawned in this beautiful, colorful, and friendly domain. Greatness awaits where hopes shall not wane, where tales of triumph weave a tapestry. Welcome to Today in African History. True story, the year was 2016, 40 something year old, black, British, Nigerian man, sets off to the United States of America to clear his head. And he goes on this ro long road trip from Houston, Texas to New York City, New York State. On his way there, of course, one of the states he drives through is the state of Georgia. As soon as he enters the borders, he crosses the line, he puts on Georgia on my mind. Ray Charles's Georgia on my mind. Just goes to YouTube and puts the song on. Memories that last a lifetime. This is the Today in History channel. And today, of course, is the 23rd of September. And of course, Ray Charles was born on this day. Ray Charles, original name, Ray Charles Robinson, born in 1930, September 23rd, in Albany, Georgia. Sadly passed on 10th of June, 2004, in Beverly Hills, California. He was an American pianist, singer, composer, and band leader. A leading entertainer, billed as the genius, Charles was credited with the early development of soul music, a style based on a melding of gospel, rhythm, and blues, and jazz music. When Charles was an infant, his family moved to Greenville, Florida, and he began his musical career at the age of five on the piano in a neighborhood cafe. He began to go blind at six, possibly from glaucoma, and had completely lost his sight by the age of seven. Over the years, even with his disability, Charles's rhythmic piano playing and hand arranging revived the funky quality of jazz, but he also recorded many other musical genres. He entered the pop market 
with the bestsellers Georgia on my mind in 1960 and Hit the Road Jack in 1961. His album Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music sold more than a million copies as did its single I Can't Stop Loving You. Other notable hit songs included Busted in 1963, Crime Time 1965, and America the Beautiful in 1972. Thereafter, his music emphasized jazz standards and renditions of pop and show tunes. From 1955, Charles toured extensively in the United States and elsewhere with his own big band, the gospel-style female backup quartet called the Relax. He also appeared on television and worked in films such as Ballad in Blue, 1964, and the Blues Brothers in 1980 as a featured act and soundtrack composer. The recipient of many national and international awards, he received 13 Grammy Awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award in 1987. In 1986, Charles was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and received a Kennedy Center honor. He was also awarded the National Medal of Arts in 1993. He published an autobiography, Brother Ray, Ray Charles' own story in 1978, written by David Ritz. He was the subject of the acclaimed biopic, Ray, 2004, which starred Jamie Foxx as Charles in an Academy Award-winning performance. So. This is the inimitable, lovely Ray Charles, who appears to be always happy, always smiling. So, in case you're wondering who that young 40-something-year-old man was in the year 2016 on his road trip to the United States of America, of course that was me. Um, And I thoroughly enjoyed that road trip. It was a painful one, 2,100 miles, 18 hours on the road, but I made it finally. To my destination, New York, New York City. Highly recommended, guys. If you're watching this and you've never been to the United States of America, or you've been before, you've never done a road trip, do a road trip. Hire a car if you can and enjoy the sights and sounds of this huge country, the United States of America. So we go on to the next notable event on this day. Of course, that event was the birth of John Coltrane. I'm sure you can guess what he does. Born on this day in 1926 in Hamlet, North Carolina, United States of America, he sadly died July 17, 1967 in Huntington, New York. He was an American jazz saxophonist, band leader and composer, an iconic figure of 20th century jazz. Coltrane's first musical influence was his father, a tailor and part-time musician. John studied clarinet and alto saxophone as a youth and then moved to Philadelphia in 1943 and continued his studies at the Einstein School of Music and the Granoff Studios. Coltrane's best known work spanned a period of only 12 years from 1955 to 1967, but because he recorded prolifically, his musical development is well documented. His somewhat tentative, relatively melodic early style can be heard on the Davis-led albums recorded for the Prestige and Columbia labels during 1955 and 1956. Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane, 1957, reveals Coltrane's growth in terms of technique and harmonic sense, and evolution further chronicled on Davis's albums and Milestones and Kind of Blue. Most of Coltrane's early solo albums are of a high quality, particularly Blue Train, released in 1957. Perhaps the best recorded example of his early 
hard bop style. So bop related to the bebop style, of course. Recordings from the end of the decade, such as Dance Steps in 1959 and My Favorite Things in 1960, offer dramatic evidence of his developing virtuosity. Nearly all of the many albums called Train Recorded during the early 1960s rank as classics. A Love Supreme, released in 1964, is a deeply personal album reflecting his religious commitment. It's regarded as especially fine work. So again, this is John Coltrane, who was born on this day in 1926, an American jazz saxophonist, band leader, and composer, an iconic figure of 20th century jazz. Last but not least, it's the inimitable James Mpanza. James Sofosoke Mpanza. Born on the 15th of May, 1889, he passed sadly on the 23rd of September, 1970. He was a community leader and social activist in Johannesburg, South Africa, from the mid-1940s until the late 1960s. In 1944, he led the land invasion that resulted in the largest housing development and the founding of modern Soweto. Mpanza is known as the father of Soweto, understandably so. In 1927, he made his living by teaching in Pretoria before he moved to Orlando, Johannesburg in 1934. He would ride a horse through Orlando, giving rise to an air of eccentricity. In 1937, he formed the Orlando Boys Club, which was renamed Orlando Pirates Football Club in 1939. He would send a proposal in 1958 to the city of Johannesburg for a stadium in Orlando, which resulted in the construction of Orlando Stadium in 1959. Mpanda operated informal courts in his Orlando home where family disputes could be settled. Conditions, however, were poor and there was no health service. The death of Mpanza's son, Dumisani, was put down to poor medical care. The squatters had left the slums of Orlando, but their plight was still not certain, and Mpanza got a nickname, Sofosuke, we shall all die as he added his opinion of the outlook if they had no help. So, Sofasoke simply meant we shall all die in the South African language. I'm guessing it's Zulu. So, Sofasoke. He added his opinion of the outlook if they had no help. So, this was his outlook that if they had no help, they were all going to die. It was this rhetoric that got him the nickname, but it also encouraged the funding necessary to convert his shanty town of Soweto into the town of South West Township. So South West Township, the acronym is Soweto, South West Township. So Soweto is simply an acronym for South West Township. It was not just rhetoric, however, as he used his loyal following to create supportive candidates for the Orlando Advisory Board. So this was a man who was determined to change the destiny of South Africa, the destiny of South Africans, especially black South Africans who were living in abject poverty. So he is the man behind the founding of what is today known as Soweto or the South West Township. James, James Sofason K. Mpanza passed on on this day, 23rd September, 1970. A community leader, social activist, 
in Johannesburg, South Africa in the mid 1940s. Don't forget the name, James Tufasonke Mpanza, the father of modern day Soweto. On that note, we have come to the end of today's Today in African History. I hope you've learned one or two things about Africa and Africans. Hopefully you join us tomorrow. If you do like what we're sharing here, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so that you receive updates of our future uploads. So again, if you do like the video, it's just going to help the algorithm to spread this video to like-minded people, people who are interested in African history, people who are interested in the future of Africa, because I believe that Africa has a bright future. Our current population is 1.4 billion people. I think the closest two countries are China and India. And but we have the youngest population. That means Africa is the most energetic continent on the planet. And it's projected that within the next 25 years, some countries in Africa would be the wealthiest in the wealthiest top 10. So it's time to take advantage of the opportunities in Africa. If you live outside Africa in the West where you're having to work tirelessly from day to day, paying most of your money out in taxes and the light bill, the electricity bill, water bill, road tax, whatever it is, Africa is a place to be. Africa is the new frontier. So I'd encourage you, if you're thinking, considering, considering investing in Africa, this is a time to take advantage of Africa's vibrant population. Until tomorrow, hasta la vista.